And grouting a tile job is 50% application and 50% preparation. If you make sure that your lines are clean and you don't have cement sticking through from the installation process, it'll be a lot easier. A, to prep and make sure it's clean. And when you're done grouting, you won't have as many touch-ups to do. When I'm grouting, I always like to use a different color cement than I am grout. So in this case, we're using a white grout, so I use a gray cement. This way, when I grout, I can be sure that I found all of the spots that have need to be cleaned out and repaired before we finish and turn it over to the client. And the reason that's so important is because over time, even if I used a white cement with a white grout, there'll be different color whites and they'll discolor. And so six months down the road, they won't be happy with the look because they'll have different texture and different colors pocket, poking, you know, different color poking through the wall. So this way I can ensure the maximum amount of quality that I can forgive the client before I leave the house. Nothing worse in my business than getting called back to do something you should have done right the first time. Okay, mixing your grout now is a pretty simple process. Today we're using unsanded grout. Um, this is a Mapi product with polymer. I love it. It's basic, it's simple, great uniform color. Um, really easy to apply, easy to wash. Uh, it doesn't have any hardeners or any advanced technologies in it because we don't need it here. We have a waterproofing membrane, so we get to go with a, a grout that gives us the the ability to shine and polish and form just the way we want to. So what we do is we've added a little bit of water in the bottom here. Unsanded grout is really try, kind of tricky. It's very similar to like a pancake batter, where if you get the wrong amount of moisture, you put too much in too early, you'll never recover. You'll just end up using the whole bag of pancake flour mix, right? You start off with too much water. When you mix, you'll end up having uh, such a soupy mix, you'll be sitting here for three or four hours waiting for it to evaporate. So what I like to do is add a little bit of water at a time. And there we go, this will be perfect. We'll mix this for about two minutes. Make sure that uh, we don't have any dry spots. On low speed. Very important when mixing grout to use a low speed mixer, such as the one as I'm using here. At high speeds, you're gonna take all the different molecules and you're gonna be spinning it around so fast that they'll separate. And then let's say you're using a brown grout, for instance, you'll have red streaks. And when you put it on your floor, you'll have different color grout all over your floor. And you, you'll be sitting there wondering, why did that happen? It's because you mixed it too fast. All right, time to go and put it on the wall. So with a standard grout, you have about 20 minutes, half an hour to apply the grout and then within an hour or so to wash it all off. So that's plenty of time. We're not rushed, we get to take our time. So I'll just show you a bit of a technique. Generally speaking, the trick to grout, what you're doing with the unsanded, you can see how sloppy that is. It's still firm, but it's not very easy to manage. So I'd like to start at the bottom and then just lie it up the wall. Not worry about where it's falling all over the place. It's one of the reasons why we clean the tub is so that we can salvage any grout that's fallen on the floor or I mean inside the tub and it's still going to be usable. Just get some coverage on the wall and start at the top and work our way down on an angle. Filling those crevices with the grout. Just pushing back and forth into the grout lines in different directions so they fill it all up. And when I'm happy with the area on a the wall, then I'm gonna remove it and put it next to me. Because the less grout that I leave on the wall, the less I have to wash off. When you're grouting the corners of the tile, you'll see that your, most of these floats, they have a square edge and they have a rounded edge. If I use the square edge in this corner, I end up cleaning all the grout out. We don't want that. So what you do is 
This ball was in first, this one came in second. So on the wall that comes in second, you use the round edge, load up your grout, and just do it this way. That leaves a nice concave fill in the corner, and you're ready to go. So the next step to grouting is to polish the grout. Um, just take any basic grout sponge, you sell them at the hardware store, usually about two bucks a pop. And they're good for one application. Um, you can use it today, you might be able to use it to wash a wall the next day, but you don't ever want to mix grout, sorry, you don't ever want to use a sponge for, for cleaning off grout more than one time, because you want it as clean as possible. Now you can see it's starting to dry, it's getting a little pasty. So what I do is I'm just using a damp, damp sponge, there's hardly any water coming out of here, and I'm just going to do circles. And the idea here is just take off a lot of the excess grout and polish my lines and identify what kind of condition my grouting is in. Okay, so I can see here I got a little bit of a, I got a hole, I got a little bit of dirt, blah, blah, blah. We're just gonna go through the whole wall here, identify all our little issues. So this project we're doing in two days. So yesterday we did the project from demolition right to tile. Doing that is a disadvantage in the fact that the tile application happened rather quickly. So it wasn't as clean as I would have liked it have to have been. So I've got areas here where I've got dirt sticking out of my grout. We tried earlier to clean it up as best we could, but it's really difficult to be perfect at that point. So now I'm taking my grout remover tool, moving the extra cement from these affected areas. Now we've got our grout set aside, so we're gonna just put it up there. So we're going to finish just polishing. You can see here, like we talked earlier about using the gray cement, it's kind of a blessing and a curse because I can see where my problems are, but I have to see all the problems I have to fix. 